Hey, I'm Chris Zett from Make Everything, and today I'm gonna to give you a comprehensive guide on how to drill holes in metal, particularly steel. Check it out. All right, so one of the big questions I get from people when I'm doing metal work is how to drill holes in metal, and particularly steel. Aluminum is really soft, and for the most part, you can use basic woodworking tools on it. You'll see guys cutting aluminum with a table saw, even using a router on it. Same thing goes for brass. Once you move into steel and anything harder than steel, stainless steel, titanium, stuff like that, you need to do things a little bit differently. That being said, I find that a lot of times when I make a product for a woodworker, they are always intimidated by drilling holes in that product. Like let's say I make shelf brackets for a cabinet maker. If they need to move the holes because of the design change, they always call me and go, hey, I don't have the right drill bits to drill another hole in this. Help me, I don't know what to do, all that stuff. It's not that complicated. Drilling holes in steel is actually really easy and you don't need anything particularly special to do it. I will guarantee that if you're watching this video, you already have whatever you need to drill holes in steel accurately and well and easily um, just by using what you've already got on hand. So before I go into the actual drilling of some holes, I'm just gonna run through some stuff about drill bits and drills in general. And then we'll go through the process of actually drilling some holes in some quarter inch, thinner and thicker pieces of steel with and without lubricant with these different things, show you how it goes. So a lot of people think you need, you know, special drill bits to drill holes in mild steel. Now that's important, what I just said there, mild steel. So mild steel is gonna be anything you get from a metal supplier that isn't specifically hardened. You know, like a chromoly or a stainless um, is a little bit harder, but like knife steel, once you've hardened it, is no longer mild, right? It, it's hardened and it, it's not gonna cut with a regular drill bit, but just store-bought steel, stuff you'd get from Home Depot or Lowe's, um, or your general metal supplier, A36 is another word for it, is gonna drill just fine with regular drill bits. Right here, we've got a very inexpensive set of Ryobi drills from Home Depot. Um, now these are a 135 degree angle, they have a bronze oxide finish, um, and these are not expensive. I wanna say, I, I think I got this set on Black Friday for like 10 bucks. These will drill steel perfectly fine, I have used these bits, I have probably 20 of these sets all around my shop. I have drilled thousands of holes with Ryobi drill bits through steel, thick and thin, and I have broken a bunch, yes. I've dulled many of them, yes, but they've worked for most of my purposes. The better option for drilling holes in steel is a harder drill bit. A harder drill bit would be a cobalt drill bit. These drills here are from Montana, Rocky Mountain Tool Company. These are a cobalt drill. So instead of being made of high-speed steel, which is harder than mild steel, the cobalt drills last much longer. They cut a much cleaner hole and it's a much more efficient process. That being said, a drill like this is much more expensive. A set like this is gonna run you multiples more than a set like this, but if you're drilling a lot of holes and you wanna be more efficient, investing in a good set of cobalt drills is absolutely something that is worth doing. There are many also specialty kind of drills for drilling in multiple materials, but these ones from DeWalt are particularly interesting. So you can see the tip of this drill is much different than what you would expect from a normal drill. Now this has a stepped little cut into it. So essentially you can use these drills without a pilot hole. The idea is that this smaller section of drill acts essentially as a small pilot bit, then this larger section of drill begins to cut. I typically always drill a pilot hole when I'm drilling through th thick pieces of material, but something like this can also basically be used as a counter bore to make a flat bottomed hole in a thicker piece of material, steel or aluminum. Um, I haven't found another company that makes a drill like this. DeWalt sells a set of a bunch of different sizes of these types of drills, and they're really nice to have in the toolkit, especially when you're dealing with metal and you need to recess bolt heads or something like that. That being said, you can't countersink with these with the angled point like you can with a regular drill. All right, so here I've got a piece of quarter inch thick mild steel. This is just a piece of quarter by one and a half. And this is a very typical thing that I would be drilling through in my shop. Um, another very typical material I'll use is eighth inch, but quarter inch is a little bit heavier and the properties of this will obviously scale down into thinner material, 
just about the same. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna show you the performance of an inexpensive drill bit, and we'll use a common size, which is quarter inch, to drill through this. Now, a lot of times, you'll start with a pilot hole, uh, drilling a smaller hole first, that's gonna help, but I wanna uh, go through this in a more practical setting, and I'm gonna be honest, if I'm drilling a quarter inch hole, I'm not putting a pilot hole in it, I'm just gonna go straight through it with the drill. Since I'm using an inexpensive drill bit, I'll use an inexpensive drill. This is a Ryobi uh, 1 HP. This is from their new sort of performance line. Um, they are definitely a formidable piece of tooling to have in the shop. I've been using these for a while and I actually really like them. They're super inexpensive and they work great. Now, one of the things when you're drilling steel is you always wanna have a punch mark for your drill bit to register in. Now, when you're drilling in wood, the wood is soft enough where the front of this drill, wherever you put it, it's gonna stay. Now, when we're drilling in metal, if I try to drill into this, maybe if I push hard enough, I'll be able to get that drill to stay in the exact spot, but it can also skate across the material. So if we take a center punch and we put a little punch mark exactly where we wanna drill, the drill point is gonna find its way into there and it's generally gonna stay in that area and we can drill straight through. So to center punch your metal, you can use one of two things. This is an automatic center punch, which has a spring in it. As you press it down, there's a little detent in there and it'll snap. You heard that little click, it'll leave a little dot. Now, a lot of times in steel, these don't give you a good enough impression. So I like to use a hammered center punch. This is just from a cheap kit. We can set it in there, give it a tap, and it's gonna make a nice dimple for that drill bit to register into. So now, with a quarter inch drill, we could use lubricant, but just for the clarity of this video, I'm gonna just drill it without lubricant and show you that you don't necessarily always need it. Now, I have my piece of material clamped in a vise. I'm gonna get the tip of my drill, just sort of lined up in there. And I've got my drill set on the lower speed of the two. I'm just gonna give it a nice even downward pressure and let that drill start working. So now at this point, the drill has just gotten past the point where it's cutting with just the tip. It's starting to cut past that and I've generated basically a small channel. The hole isn't even really looking perfectly round, but if we keep pressing and keep a nice even downward pressure, this drill is gonna be able to pilot its way straight through this quarter inch material. So now I'm starting to get a nice long chip, which means this drill is cutting really efficiently. These small chips are, are kind of showing that I'm really not giving it enough pressure because I'm just holding a hand drill, but I am getting through it. Now, one of the things you have to look out for when you're drilling through steel is as you break through the bottom side, sometimes the drill will want to catch, so just be aware of that. So you can see with this inexpensive drill, I was able to pop through quarter inch through quarter inch. The drill bit remained sharp. Now, the thing about using a cutting lubricant when you're drilling through steel, uh, it's absolutely gonna help. It's gonna help keep the life of this drill working. It's gonna keep the cutting edge working. Um, and you wanna use one whenever you can. I'm trying to show you guys sort of a, you know, out in the field scenario, or maybe you don't have any cutting lubricant, but you can use WD-40, you can use three-in-one oil, um, really, any sort of lubricant's gonna help these drills cut better. Now I'm gonna do the same exact hole, but with a cobalt drill, just to show you the difference. So you can see the cobalt drill is definitely faster and it is more efficient. The other thing to remember is that with a cobalt drill, you're just gonna get more cycles out of that tool. You're gonna get more uses out of a single drill than you are out of a high speed steel or a, you know, a, a lower quality material drill. Now again, I was just using a hand drill on that. It's not so typical that you would be drilling with a hand drill through quarter inch material, especially with a quarter inch bit, but obviously it's possible. Now, if you took this and you scaled it back to say sheet metal or eighth inch thick material, it would be much, much faster. Same thing when it would come to maybe drilling through a piece of tube, stuff like that. So if we move down from quarter inch, things are just going to get easier. Now, that being said, using the hand drill is not ideal. If you can, using a drill press is gonna provide you with much better and faster results. So let's go over to the drill press and I'll show you how that's set up so that you can do this easily with a drill press, drill many more holes much faster using one of those tools. All right, so 
here is one of my main drill presses. This is the one I use in the metal shop. This is an old Powermatic Model 1150. This thing is great. It's variable speed using this dial up here so you don't have to go through and change belts. But this heavy duty unit is not necessary to drill holes in steel. You can really use anything. And I'm gonna show you the first drill press that I ever owned, which I still keep in the shop, is more than capable of drilling holes through that material. All right, here it is in all its glory, my Sears Craftsman 8-inch drill press. This was my dad's. Um, it has a three-speed range, which is set through these belts. Uh, it does 620, 1300, and 3100 RPM. Um, nowadays, a lot of drill presses have you know 16 or more speeds. This one doesn't want to close. There we go. My dad gave me this drill press more than 10 years ago, and I use it mainly to deburr holes with this round carbide burr. It just sort of taps the holes and it does a great job. Um, that being said, this is the kind of thing you can buy at like a garage sale for maybe 40 or 50 bucks. And you can easily use this for wood and obviously also for metal as I'm going to show you. Now with a drill press like this, you're going to want to bring the speed down to as low as you can possibly go. Um, I try to keep my drills around three to 400 RPMs when I'm drilling steel. And while you can make them faster for drilling smaller holes, I found that that 350 to 450 RPM range is ideal for pretty much every size hole all the way up to one inch that you're gonna be drilling in a, in a piece of steel. So we've got our drill set to the lowest speed it'll go, which is 620 RPMs. And I've got it so that my drill is going to come through the bottom of my table. There's a hole there. You don't wanna peck up your table. Um, a lot of drill press tables get holes drilled in them um, from people not realizing where the table is. So I always like to check. And uh, with a piece like this, I can hold on to it and we're gonna drill this hole. Now the, the whole quality when you use a drill press is absolutely better than when you use a hand drill. The drill has an opportunity to stay straighter. Um, and this is the inexpensive Ryobi drill. And you can see how quickly I was able to punch through this. Now, the drill was running a little fast, but if you've got one of these inexpensive small drill presses, you absolutely can drill through steel with no problem. You could drill hundreds of holes. I've drilled thousands of holes with this drill press before I got other ones. No issue at all. So on this Powermatic drill press, like I said, you adjust the speed using this knob. Now it has a, what's called a Reeves drive in it. So I'll show you right now it's set on the slowest speed. If I turn this knob, I can get faster speeds all the way up to 4,000 RPM. Now a drill press like this with how I have it set up, will go down to about 475 to 450 RPMs. And I'll show you how if you go down to a lower RPM like we've got here, we can drill a much larger hole in this with no pilot. So for this, I'm gonna be drilling a half inch hole straight through this quarter inch plate. Now we are gonna use a little bit of drilling lubricant on this one. This is a tapping fluid called Omida High Tap, but you could easily use Tap Magic, which is something that they sell uh, at most machine shops and, and on Amazon. Uh, it's great stuff and it works great. So this is a little bit thicker, so I like to use it. And we're just gonna put a little puddle there so the drill has some lubricant as it goes through. Once the drill gets started, we'll add a little bit more. So that took no time at all. We've got a really nice, clean half inch hole through this piece of quarter inch bar. Now you can imagine if you had a lot of holes to drill, this would be a really efficient way to do it versus going and drilling pilot holes. That being said, you are putting a lot of wear on the front cutting edges of this drill. So if you have the time and you wanna drill an even cleaner hole, drill a small pilot hole first. And I can demonstrate that by going back through one of my quarter inch holes with this half inch drill bit, just to show you how much better of a cut we get.
So a much faster process to get through that when we have a pilot hole, but again, still a really nice, clean, drilled hole. Where a lot of people struggle when it comes to drilling through metal though, is once you try to go over a half an inch. So most drill sets that you'll buy will go up to a half inch. Now, when you're in a woodworking environment to get an over half inch hole, you can use either a spade bit or a Forstner bit or a hole saw very easily. You know, these can just chuck up in your drill or your drill press and you can get pretty much an unlimited range of sizes up to probably six or eight inch if you get a big enough hole saw. Now in metal, it's not so easy. Um, we've got to use basically the same twist drill style drill through our piece of steel, um, or we have to use basically an adaptation of a hole saw, which is called an annular cutter. Now these annular cutters here are designed specifically to be used with a magnetic drill. They have a, a special shank on them that locks into the magnetic drill, but you can also buy annular cutters with a regular shaft on them. Um, these are carbide tipped from Jancy Slugger, and these are great to have if you need to drill an oversized hole, again, very efficiently. Now, not every application lends itself to using an annular cutter because since they are a, basically a hole saw, there is a limit to how much they can do, and they also sometimes can have a hard time tracking. A set of drills like this is called a Silver and Deming drill bit set. This goes from 9 16 to one inch. This is a super inexpensive set off of Amazon, but I have used this to drill hundreds of holes uh, in three quarter and 13 16 for larger bolts. All right, so we talked about drilling holes using the hand drill and talked about drilling holes using a drill press. Those tools are very common and you can do a lot of work with them. You can easily get up to a half inch like I showed you and they're great when you're working in a controlled environment or obviously with a hand drill out in the field. Now, if you need to drill a lot of holes and especially larger holes in thicker material, you're gonna want one of these. These are magnetic drills. We've got two different kind of flavors here. This is a Milwaukee, which is cordless. Um, it's very useful, extremely versatile. And this is an Evolution, which is a plug-in. Um, and the way these work is there is a magnet in the base that you can either turn on with a switch like here. As you can see, I can move this around now. If I flip the switch on the back, this is now magneted to the table. Um, this table is steel, obviously. So if this was a big piece of plate, this thing would be locked in and it uses a rack and pinion, sort of like a drill press and will move a drill up and down. Now this Milwaukee one being cordless is a little bit different because Milwaukee didn't want you to be reliant on the strength of the battery to keep this thing up. It uses a permanent magnet, which uses a kind of turn lever on the back. You turn it and it locks this thing down. This is a 1600 pound table and it's easily shaking the table. That's how well it's down. And then you can pull on this and it'll turn on the drill. The nice thing about this Milwaukee one, obviously the fact that it doesn't have a cord just makes it really easy to use, but it isn't as quick to get stuck to the table because you have to turn this knob. I'm gonna show you how both of these work in practice by drilling a hole in a larger piece of plate. So a situation where you would use a mag drill is on a larger piece of material, or you know, say if you had to drill into a table, um, anything that you wouldn't be able to pick up and carry, you can bring this drill over to it and essentially have a drill press on your work. Another place where they're really useful is on columns and beams and tubing. So I'll use a piece of tubing here as, as an example, and I'll show you how one of these would work in a horizontal and an also a vertical setting. This is a piece of quarter inch wall, four by four. So by turning this knob on the back, the magnet locks down. And I wanna say this has about a thousand pounds or 1200 pounds of force. On this particular drill, I can move the handle over to either side so you guys will be able to see better. And this has a keyed chuck on it. So we'll throw a 3 8 inch drill bit in here and we'll drill a hole through this plate. Now, most mag drills that I've used have a dovetail on them that you can actually adjust the throw of the drill with. So I'll show you that. Now, if this drill was, was particularly long on a mag drill, you can usually loosen the actual drill head, move it up and down on the dovetail, which would then you know, allow you to change how much throat this drill even has if you had a really long drill or a short one. So we'll drill a quick hole in this piece.
Now inevitably when you drill a hole with a mag drill, you're gonna get steel chips. Since you've got a huge magnet here on the bottom, these steel chips are gonna go right to it. A lot of times these can be sharp, so you have to be careful. When we're done, we disengage the magnet and we can take our drill right off our beam and continue on. All right, now simulating a column, this is another great application for a mag drill. So we've got our magnetic drill, we've got to drill a hole in this column, and let's say you know we have to drill 100 holes in this column. If we were to try to stand here with a hand drill, it's gonna be difficult. So what we can do with a magnetic drill is we can actually put it on its side, and then we can engage the magnet and it will stick to the beam. So right now we have a horizontal boring drill press. Now, anytime you do anything with a mag drill other than flat, it's recommended that you strap the mag drill to the piece because if let's say you were working overhead, if you gave this thing a hard enough shot, it would fall, these things are very heavy and it could potentially fall and kill somebody. So in this case, since we're in a controlled environment, I'm not gonna strap it up, but you can see how this thing works on its side. So we get our hole, again, we've got these nice razor sharp drill twists. And just for reference too, I'm using uh, the inexpensive drill on this one. Um, again, you'd get way more cycles out of a nice high quality cobalt, but you can use cheap drills just the same. We can disengage the magnet. And just like that, we're off. And just to show you, this is the Evolution mag drill, which is AC powered. And the way this one would hook up, you'd put it on your material and then you flip the switch on the back and it's also magneted in place. So same thing. Um, this one just obviously isn't battery powered, so you need a cord. The other thing about this is now this is magneted to here. If I pop this cord out, that's it. The magnet breaks. So a plug-in mag drill from a safety standpoint is a little more dangerous, right? The permanent magnet on the Milwaukee cordless is always gonna be magnetized. There is no electricity involved. It is a permanent magnet. I believe it shifts the poles into place. So this thing on its side could stay, you know, indefinitely. This piece, if you have it magneted to the side of a beam on a job and it's not strapped, God forbid the power goes out or somebody kicks the cord off like I just did, that's it, it's gonna fall. So just something to be aware of if you're ever using a mag drill other than on a you know horizontal surface. So while I've got the mag drill out, I wanna talk about the shank on most mag drills and mag drill accessories. This is called a weld-on shank. It's a three quarter inch round shank, usually with a keyway or two keyways cut into it. On the Milwaukee, you've actually got a quick latch system. Um, it's like this bayonet style. You, you turn it and it will lock the weld-on chuck on, and then it's good to go. On the Evolution, you actually have two Allen keys that you would tighten up and it would lock on it. The reason that these are good is because essentially with annular cutters, which are what we have right here, these have a weld-on shank already on them. Um, this allows you to get a little better throat depth out of your mag drill because these are so short and stubby and they'll pretty much never slip because there's a positive lock on them. So there's a lot of torque on an annular cutter when it's trying to cut. You know, like I said, it's a, basically a little mini carbide hole saw. So what we can do now, now that I got this annular cutter in there, I'll show you how we could easily drill a one inch hole through this quarter inch plate using the mag drill. Now this particular mag drill has two speeds. One is four annular cutters. And I do want to put a little bit of cutting oil on this. A lot of the times you'll use a through coolant with something like this, where there'll actually be a coolant bottle that feeds through the annular cutter itself, just so that you can get more cycles out of them. For this purpose, I'm just going to drill dry or with just a little bit of lubricant so you can see what's going on. A good tip if you have a mag drill, buy one of these inexpensive magnetic pickup tools 
on Amazon and you can use them to clear chips. And then when you want to throw them in the garbage, you just pull this little plunger and the chips will fall away. Once I disengage my magnet, this stuff won't want to stick to it anymore and I can get all the chips out of there uh, without having to grab with my hands. This also works great for the drill press, obviously. So one of the things I've been asked by people uh, that are getting started and buying out sort of their shop and their tools is, can they just buy a magnetic drill um, and use it for drilling holes in metal and steel instead of maybe buying a drill press that can go down to a slow enough speed? The answer is yes, if you're only ever going to use drill bits like this. But at the same time, you know, you have to position and reposition this every single time that you go to use it. So it's not efficient at all. Plus these things are really expensive. The other thing you have to think about too, you've got that magnet there basically creating a really small throat on this drill. On a drill press, usually you've got seven, 10 to seven inches from the column to the actual center of the spindle quill. If you have a 14 inch drill press, usually you've got seven inches from the column to the center of the quill so that if you had a 14 inch piece, you could hit the center of it. So on a mag drill, you've only got about an inch and a quarter from the center of this quill to the actual base of the magnet. So while it's great for using straight drill bits, if you were to say, try to use a hole saw like this, a hole saw would actually hit the magnet and this hole saw is only two and a half inches. So just something to remember, uh, mag drills are a great accessory in your metal shop and they're fantastic for going out in the field. Once you go out in the field and do a little bit of work with one of these, you'll want to bring one every time you have to go out and do site work. That's the reason that I went out and bought this cordless one because it just made such a difference when I would go out into the field to not have to try to find an outlet. Um, and also just from a safety perspective, knowing that I can just lock or unlock this magnet um, and know that it's never going to fall off, it really makes a big difference. If you're out on a job and you're working somewhere else, you know, maybe you're on a job with other trades or there's somebody else there, or you're in like a customer's house, you never know if someone's gonna just walk by and kick a plug out of the wall, which would render the magnet on one of these plug-in ones useless and really add a level of danger that you don't want. All right, so the last thing I wanna talk about when it comes to drilling holes in metal is using hole saws. Now, a hole saw like this, this is a Milwaukee hole dozer. You've seen these before at like Home Depot or Lowe's. These usually have this kind of quick uh, arbor. So you thread this on and then it's got two little pins that will go up into a hole, keep this thing from rotating. This is a set of hole saws from my friends at Faird. These are also a bimetal hole saw and these are super high quality and I've had really great luck with them. They also have a little bit smaller of a tooth set. So I found that they drill a bit more of an accurate hole than say one of these off the shelf ones, but both of these will do the trick. Um, now the key with drilling with a hole saw is absolutely gonna be the speed that the hole saw is going. Um, a lot of times when people try to use these on metal, they run them really fast, like they're drilling through a piece of wood. If you were drilling through say a two by six with one of these, you'd set your drill to the higher speed, basically to avoid the clutch from snapping your wrist. Usually guys run these real fast, um, but any amount of speed, even if you're drilling wood, can destroy these. Um, you're basically gonna be generating heat in those teeth. And if you heat these teeth up enough, they're gonna get super heat, they're gonna get, if you heat these teeth up enough, they're gonna get so hard that they lose their hardness and lose their temper. So you're gonna to wanna to really watch your heat when you drill with these. Now, anytime you're drilling with a hole saw, you want the most rigid and controlled setup that you can get. So ideally, you're gonna to wanna to do this on a drill press. That being said, when I make table legs for furniture, I typically use eighth wall tubing, and I have very often had to add power cables two table legs and I'll go back in right here with my inch and three quarter hole saw and I'll just use a hand drill and drill a hole right through a piece of eighth inch tube with this on site with a little bit of lubricant. I'll show you that now uh, with this inch and a half hole saw through a piece of eighth inch tubing just using a hand drill. Something to note too if you're dealing with steel tube, you see this line right here? This is the weld seam. So at the steel mill, this tube is rolled and then weld it in ground. That weld seam is typically the hardest part of this piece of tube, and weld seams love to break drill bits. On a piece of rectangular tubing, it's usually offset, 
but on a piece of square tubing, it's usually right down the middle. If you have to do a bunch of drilling in a piece of tube or a bunch of pieces of tube, try to line up that weld seam with the side or the side that you don't have to drill on just so that you can keep the you know, longevity in your drilling tools. So I'm just gonna clamp this to the table and we'll drill a hole in it with this. This is eighth inch, two by three box tube. Now for this application in a piece of steel, I always like to drill a pilot hole first. So if you pop off your hole saw, there's a pilot bit inside the arbor. Now I always like to drill that hole through my material first, just so that when I'm cutting, I have a really nice guide just to start. In wood, it's soft enough, you don't really need to worry about that. Now we wanna make sure our drill's on the lower speed and then we can put some cutting oil on the piece and start drilling. Once you develop a well, you're gonna to wanna to take a little bit of cutting oil and put it in there just to help lubricate that cut. So now these slugs usually have a pretty nasty burr on them where they break through. But another application for this is if you ever need to make a custom washer and you have the right size hole saw, you can actually use your hole saw to make a nice big like fender washer out of any material that you have in the shop. So there's been times where I've just needed a bunch of big washers and I'll set up a piece of plate and I'll use a hole saw maybe on the bridge port so that it's really rigid and controlled. And I'll just punch a bunch of holes with one of these hole saws and I can make myself a bunch of really nice custom washers. Now, if, let's say you were making a table leg for a customer and you had to drop an extension cord through it, you could easily do that through this piece of tubing. Really not hard at all to use a hole saw um, for this application. All right, so the last thing I wanna talk about are step drills. Now, step drills are usually found in the electrician's aisle in like a Home Depot or a Lowe's. A lot of times electricians will use them to expand the holes in the sides of panels and breaker boxes and electrical boxes like that. They're basically a long cone-shaped drill with multiple steps in it, and as you go, the cutting flutes will cut and sequentially dig in a little bit more and more to make the holes larger. These are really great to have in your toolbox um, if you ever need to drill an unknown hole and a thin piece of material on a job. This one will go up to half inch and this larger one will go up to inch and three eighths. You can use these in a hand drill, in a drill press, whatever. I don't like to use them on anything more than 16 gauge or 16th inch thick material just because they do tend to kind of chatter and bind and um, they don't really like to cut that thicker material. So let's give this a shot on some 16 gauge tubing and I'll show you how you can easily use these to make larger holes on the spot. So now with either of these, you've got a pretty good size tip on them. So if I'm gonna drill with one of these, I usually like to put a quick pilot hole in because the tips of these are usually not very sharp. They dull out quickly um, and they don't really like to pierce through the material. So this step drill has larger gradations and you can go up to half an inch. So by drilling that first step, I get a quarter inch hole. If I go to the next one, I'll get five sixteenths, three eighths, seven sixteenths, and so on. I'll show you how I can run through all the steps. So just like that, I'm up to a half inch hole through this material with only using one bit, essentially. You know, I did that pilot hole, but I can step through this. And since there's this kind of little chamfer edge on it, this is a pretty clean hole. Now we can use this larger one and we can drill all the way up to inch and three eighths if we want to. The thing to note about these types of drills though is that they are pretty long. So I'm gonna bottom out inside this tubing before I get through the whole capacity of this step drill. So 
So you can see right there, this thing kind of jumped on me. This step drill is particularly dull. And also, as you get to these larger ones, you're requiring more and more torque. So you have to watch your wrists and you have to watch how well you're holding your material. They'll tend to chatter once you get into the larger steps. So we've bottomed out the drill at about inch and a quarter. Now, this is a really good way to drill holes if you already started the hole and need to make it larger. That being said, we turned all that material into chips versus if we use the hole saw, the only material that we're turning into chips is here around the teeth. So think about the applications for both of these before you pick one over the other. These, like I said, are great to keep in your tool bag or keep in your shop because if you ever drill a hole that's just slightly too small, you can just ream it out to the next size very, very easily without having to go through and you know do anything crazy. If you need to make a hole saw hole larger, it's very, very difficult to recenter this hole with a hole saw and get this to drill. Meanwhile, we could just stick this in there and keep going. All right, that about does it for this video. Like I said, drilling holes in steel is super easy. There is a kind of mystique around it that I've found people always asking me questions about how to do it efficiently. What do I need? Do I need to buy special drill bits? Do I need to buy special tools? You saw it right here. The answer is no. I showed you how to drill on my dad's old three-speed drill press that you could probably get at a garage sale for 20 or 25 bucks. Most of this video, I used this inexpensive Ryobi driver, and most of the video, I used inexpensive drill bits. That being said, there are tons of higher-end, higher-priced items that will absolutely make your work better, your workflow more efficient, more accurate, and all those things. I highly suggest you check out the Montana cobalt drill set that I showed you. Those drills are incredible. I just started using them, but I've already seen a difference in the speed and accuracy in the holes that I drill. Another thing to check out is that silver and Deming set, those larger drill bits that are gonna get you from the half inch mark all the way up to one inch. Super inexpensive, you can get them on Amazon and easy to sharpen with a grinder. If you're gonna expand on your metal working, something to look into is a magnetic drill as well. Like I said, the ones I have here, one's about six or $700 from Evolution. You plug it in, it'll work great and do the job. If you wanna go cordless and you wanna go out onto jobs, I would definitely consider investing into a cordless mag drill like the Milwaukee. I really, really like this thing. It has become my go-to in the shop. And I find that I use it where I would normally use a regular hand drill. I will wind up grabbing this and just dropping it on the table because it's so easy to deploy without the cord that I find that I'm getting a better result I'm able to do the work faster. I'm not pressing down and putting all that strain and work into my elbows and wrists. So something to look into. I hope you enjoyed this video. I really wanna bring some education and some shop knowledge to my channel. I know I share a lot of projects, but there's a ton of stuff that I've learned over the years and learned from other makers that I wanna share here. So if you enjoyed this and you wanna see more videos like this, please leave me a comment down below. Don't forget to thumbs up this video and leave questions in the comments as well. If you have any questions or tips, I really like to have a dialogue there and I like to share information with people. There'll be some links in the description to where you can check out some of the stuff I use in this video, some of these drills and some of the tools. I'll throw some product links there and you can always ask me questions in the comments if you wanna know something specifically about a product or a process that I showed here. Again, I'm Chris Epp from Make Everything. Subscribe to my channel if you wanna see more videos like this and more videos in my shop making stuff. And check out my Instagram right here. I post pretty much every day. I share a ton of behind the scenes stuff, been doing some Q and A's lately, and it's been really fun to share shorter versions of the projects I'm working on over there. There's a ton of stuff going on here at the shop, a lot of great projects in the works, and some new videos that'll be coming out soon. So I hope you're there to watch them, and I hope to see you on the next video. Thanks.